Be a part of the best pro wrestling podcast today by supporting the Going In Raw Patreon. You can enjoy access to the live taping of the show, exclusive merchandise, and patron-only episodes, and so much more. Support Going In Raw today. Click the link in the description. Hey, friendo, Steve here. And Larson. And welcome back to Matt Chat. Ooh, it's been a little while since we've done Matt Chat, Larson. Yeah, we put it on ice. It took a powder yeah. for most of December because we had a bunch of end-of-year stuff happening. And now the year is over. Human year 2017 is over. Human done. year 2018 has begun. Yes, very exciting. Back to normalcy here at Going In Raw. Yes, Matt Chat now is every Sunday. Yeah. I don't know where it was before. Uh, where, when did we do it? Before? Friday. Oh, okay. Now we brought on, Dirt Sheet back. Now it's on Sunday. Sunday. Yeah, we're, we're figuring it out. Anyways, this is, of course, the show where we take, in 99% of the cases, video questions. We have one text-only question today from our good friend, Wayne Maker. Mm -hmm. But uh, generally, we have video questions. We've got a bunch of them today from we do. our good friendos out there. Yes. Larson, how can I get, if I wanted to put my video question on Matt Chat, how would I do it? Well, first of all, you have to be a patron. Okay. At the $20. At the $20 month level. Yes. And you can get your video on Matt Chat yeah. as well. You can participate in the show. You also get the Friendo Care Package. We're going to do a, like a commercial for that next week. Sure. Yeah, oh, all the day hairy. Anyways. Well, don't spoil it. Gosh, you spoil everything. <laughs> yeah, oh, I get so excited. Anyways, we got a bunch of good questions today. We're coming up to the Royal Rumble, so we got a couple of Rumble questions. Of course, we're just starting off 2018, so we got some what's to come in 2018 questions. Yes. But let's kick it off with a question from our good friendo, Daryl the Cat Takahashi. What's good, Steve Larson? Many friendos out there. It's the cat, Daryl Takahashi. My question for Matt Chat this week is, while it's nice that the WWE signs War Machine, Ricochet, all these top tier talents, and you know, last year them signing Adam Cole, Bebe, and Drew McIntyre, and all these other guys, is there going to be a point in WWE that there's just, that there's just too much top tier talent signed? Because while it's nice to have all these names, there's only so much time you can have on TV. Thanks, boys. Thank you, the cat. Thank you, the cat. Uh, no, no, no. You can never have too much talent, man. Here's the thing. This is, this is great. I love all the talent in the world. I hope WWE gets all the great talents. People like Will Ospreay. People like Keith Lee. People like Tetsuya Naito. No, I want him to stay in New Japan. Here's the thing about WWE. They have an entire uh, distribution platform called the WWE Network. And they can showcase all these top-level talents on in new programming on the WWE Network. I remember I got geeked out months ago when they sent out one of their little questionnaire dealios. And they were like, hey, how would, hey Steve, how would you like a TV 14 version of ECW? I think the one thing people are going to have to overcome is this idea that what you see on main roster is the end-all, be-all for this to work, for uh, them to properly allocate uh, time to top tier talent is you got Raw, you got SmackDown, but then you can put some of that talent over on a new ECW or something besides NXT, a second hour of NXT, stuff like that. Um, I think that they can create space on their network and drive more subscribers and have more swaps and trades and call-ups, et cetera, et cetera. No, you, 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 there's, there's always room for top tier talent. Can you imagine if Raw had Authors of Pain, War Machine, The Revival, which apparently I read today, they got nothing to do. They, they've got no story ideas for them. <laughs> Don't make that. Don't write that name down. <laughs> Come on, he's not even a top tier talent. Doesn't matter. They have nothing. He's he's a serviceable worker. They All should right. have something for him. So, anyways, now I think you're never. You're, there's never a situation. My favorite era of WWE isn't even necessarily the Attitude Era, which uh, you know is is it takes up a big part of my wrestling heart. But I love the post-WCW, NWO yeah. era when you had all these, all of ECW, all of WWE. You had Rob Van Dam. You had, you know, Hogan in there even. You had all these great talents. And then they were still bringing in new people like, you know, uh, Brock Lesnar, John Cena, Randy Orton. Yeah, I said Randy Orton. That's my favorite era because you had so much talent. And what did they do? They split the brand. They can still do that because of the WWE Network. They can still split brands even more 
Um, and you know what what they what they would need to do though is an infusion of, of good creative talent. So you need to get you know some good writers in there, uh, some good bookers, and uh, the, as long as they know what to do with good stories with great stories, you don't need to worry about titles. Just put these talents in great stories and great feuds. Let them wrestle to the level that they can wrestle at. <laughs> And then who cares? Then it's all good. You have eight hour pay per views. I'm cool with that. Just kick no, back. you're not. Kick back. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> you're right. I'm not. You're so not cool with that. But absolutely, yes. Give me all the top tier talent. Go ahead and tell me why it's a why it's it's a terrible idea because the case can be made right now. There's already too much talent. I'm just speaking about the main roster. Yeah. And there's not enough, not enough time for some of their really top flight talents. Example one: Shinsuke Nakamura. Wasn't on SmackDown this week. Was barely on SmackDown last week. When's the last time he was regularly featured on SmackDown Live TV? I think he was a lumberjack at one point a couple weeks Again. ago. Again, perfect. Exactly. Prove my point. No, prove my point. Oh. There's already not enough time on main roster TV for everybody. Yeah. And if you bring in, <clears throat> say, uh, say, at a certain point, you have to bring up uh, the top uh, men and women from NXT. So you got to bring up Ember Moon. You got to bring up Aleister Black. You got to bring up uh, Adam Cole, Drew McIntyre. It's going to push even more people to the side on main roster. And you made a, try to make a point about uh, having more programming on the network and how it's going to expand the... No, it's not going to bring any more subscribers in. Oh, yeah. No, because people who are going to watch this stuff are already hardcore wrestling fans. They're probably already subscribed. You're not going to bring in any casual uh, wrestling fans by having uh, Andrade Cien Almas wrestle on like some network exclusive show. It's not going to bring subscribers in. I love Almas, but it's not going to do it, Steve. Oh, wow. Um... Uh, I bring up Nakamura because I think he's the most glaring example of someone who's just kind of wallowing on SmackDown because apparently either they don't know what to do with them or they have nothing for him, which boggles my mind either scenario does because he should be a major star right now and he's being wasted. Other talents being wasted. Ty Dillinger. Don't say that name. Serviceable hand. Great wrestler. Serviceable. Could you imagine? I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt your argument because you're doing a good job. I know. But you say serviceable hand. Can you imagine if they replaced Ty Dillinger with like uh, I don't know, Will Ospreay? He wouldn't be. He would not be on TV right now. He'd be he, on 205 Live. He'd Steve. be featured on TV. And there you go. You boost. But look, Ricochet, Osprey, Kushida. Put them all in 205 we Live. We, we don't want Ricochet on 205 Live. We don't want Will Osprey on 205 Live. Yeah, you'd watch the crap out of it. it I already be, watched the crap listen, out of it. It would be the best show that they would have. It almost kind of is the best show they have right now. It's NXT and it's 205 Live. I guarantee if you put those guys on there, they would not consider it the wasteland of, of the WWE anymore. Well, it I would mean, be must-see TV. Well, I think we would consider that, but I don't know if Vince would consider that, and I think that's the important thing. Anyways, Ty, quality worker, does some good character stuff, wasted. The Revival, you just mentioned, they have nothing for them. They're one of the best tag teams on the planet. Yeah, but... The reason they have nothing for them is because they're waiting them out to see if they're going to get injured on the house show circuit. Well, they, uh, they're not going to launch into another story when they get injured every other match. Well, give them a couple months and then give them something. Yeah. Bailey, ever since she got called from NXT, bungled. And now she's not really doing anything. Same with Becky Lynch. Yeah, well, that's true. So uh, there's already a lot of talent. This is not being used to its uh, fullest potential right now. I mean, that's a creative problem, man. It's not a talent problem. Well, it is. It's partially creative, but it's partially because there's so many. Uh, moving pieces involved with both main roster shows that you can't dedicate enough energy to developing quality creative for everybody. Oh, I disagree. People get the short end of the stick. I disagree with that. Well, so, I think I think what we see on main right now, especially on SmackDown, uh, proves that point. Because no, so, no. Many, so many people on SmackDown aren't on TV regularly because they get nothing for them because there's not enough time for them. I don't think you... I don't think it's a problem. I don't think it's a problem of there's too many moving pieces. They can't find stuff... It's creative is, and maybe it, maybe it starts at the top. I believe it does with Vince. It's if you look at NXT and how they use their talent versus main roster, I think it's the perfect point. Like NXT knows how to use all of their talent from top to bottom. Main roster. So if you look at the creative, if you look at the people who are on NXT regularly, that number uh, is much smaller than either the Raw or SmackDown. Yeah, rosters. no, I get that. I'm just saying. I think the the creative aspect. I'll put it this way. I think that, and I actually do believe this. Because I, I, I kind of agree with your point that, yeah, it's going to be a problem at some point, And I'm not necessarily actually advocating for additional programming on the network like it's going to bring in new subscribers. I actually do kind of agree with your point there. Um, however, I do think that, you know, with five hours of time on the main roster, 
I, I think we can both agree that creative just doesn't use that time in the no. most effective no, manner. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. At all. It really doesn't. And I think that if you stack it with talent, if you, if you figure, I'll put it this way. If you figure out that problem with how creative handles time, and we have no evidence to suggest that that is going to change. So at this point, you're absolutely correct. But if they figure out that that's a bigger issue than bring in a lot of top tier talent. I think that's the bigger There's issue. another issue with bringing in a lot of top tier talent. You're going to have a lot of top tier talent just kind of middling. Well, that's their wheels again, though, in the mid card. And that, not, not saying that from a creative standpoint, because not everybody can be in the main event, not everybody can be in the title picture. Right. So uh, you got to have a uh, creative, and yes, it begins from, it starts from the top down, uh, willing to find interesting stories for people who aren't on the top of the card. Oh, yes, that's that's exactly right. And if you look at look at Alistair Black, Velveteen Dream, that had nothing to do with the title. That had nothing to do except one guy and another guy, you know, wanting validation. And it was a beautifully told story. And yes, it wasn't on TV every single week. But who says that you know main roster stuff has to be on TV every single week? As long as they continue those storyline threads through and through, kind of like the way they do on NXT, then people will be more willing not to see them every single week. They can toss them in, in dark matches for the live crowd. Um, so I, th I honestly think that it's a more a problem of, of the creative aspect of things and how to most effectively use your time rather than they should sort of ease up on, on getting the top tier talent. You always want, you always want the most top tier talent, man. Oh, I know. But then I, I mean, I still think you get to the point where you got, you're inundated with top tier talent. There's not enough space for top tier talent to, to creative or other, you know, uh, independent creative, uh, to necessarily thrive or get regular TV time to make connections with fans, build their own brands build a following, make money for the company. I mean, what they should be doing is releasing some pressure at the top instead of having Triple H in a match every single WrestleMania, you know, ditch oh, yeah. him instead of having, you well, know, bring back, in go Goldberg back. and Brock Lesnar. Yeah, that goes back to the thing about investing so much uh, time and, and capital in part-timers. Shane McMahon it's, shouldn't be having spotlight matches no, at WrestleMania no, 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 no. when at you do have so much top-tier talent. No, Absolutely. and then they should start investing in their future and not mm -hmm. relying so much on the past. Yep. Agreed. Agreed. Next, from our good friendo Christopher Kaufman, let's see what he has to say. What is up, friendos? It is your friendo fantasy football champion, Chris Kaufman, uh, wishing you a happy new year. And as for 2017, it was kind of a tale of two halves. The first half of the year, SmackDown was really good, whereas the latter half was dominated by Raw. Um, my question to you guys is, which brand do you think will be better in 2018, Raw or SmackDown? I'll let you choose which side you want to defend. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Christopher Kaufman. I start this one. SmackDown is going to have the better year, and I'll tell you why. One, AJ Styles. Best you wrestler win. in the world. You win. You win. They keep that WWE title on him for most of the year, as they should. Keep him an interesting feud. Let him put on stellar matches week after week, month after month. SmackDown is going to be must-watch TV. Here's another thing. Here's something Raw has working against it. Roman Reigns. Lately, we've been kind of into what Reigns is doing. He's been busting his tail in the ring, putting on good matches. But the uh, it still isn't hasn't been decided. I don't think whether he, this Roman Reigns experiment is going to be successful in the end. We won't know until after WrestleMania 34. This seems like they're heading in the right direction, but we've seen that before. Where um, when he beat Sheamus for the belt, he got a huge pop in Philadelphia. We thought, all right, they've finally figured this thing out, and within two weeks. He was basically in the background. Yeah. So a lot is going to depend on the buildup to WrestleMania 34 and what happened. Well, we know what's going to happen there. And the fallout from WrestleMania 34, whether fans will embrace him as the new face of the company. If it doesn't, that's going to be a huge problem for Raw. Um, granted, they have a, a really good plan B in Braun Strowman. They can just insert him in, put Roman back in like the mid-card picture. Yeah. Fine. Let him uh, kind of start over there. But, Let's start over. That's good. But as long as AJ Styles is on SmackDown, there's always going to be a reason to watch SmackDown. Um, the first half of 2017, SmackDown was the, the the better show in terms of the creative, in terms of writing. The the, the, the situation has kind of flip flopped of late. But who, you know who's to say SmackDown can't write the ship? They get this interesting thing. I have no idea where it's going with Shane and Daniel Bryan. Hopefully, at least Daniel Bryan getting back in the ring. Another top tier star on SmackDown Live TV. You telling me that if Daniel Bryan, as an active competitor, and AJ Styles on SmackDown are enough to draw eyeballs and lead SmackDown to to victory in Brand Warfare 2018? Wow! Yeah, get out of here, man. Yeah. That's hashtag, must watch TV. Toss in Kevin siege. Owens, Sami Zayn. 
Bobby Roode, Shinsuke Nakamura. The talent is there for SmackDown to be the best show 2018, and I think it will be best show 2018. All right, well, here's the problem with this. It, the last half of the crap. What have you done for me lately, SmackDown? You've done a bunch of creative crap. Look at Bobby Roode. He comes out. This, oh, this is one of the I main didn't mention, problems. I didn't mention Rusev. He's on SmackDown, too. This is one of the main... No, I love Rusev. And they're actually doing... Well, Rusev is getting himself over. Yeah. Creative isn't helping him at all. Um, so here's the, here's the problem with your premise, is that you say that the ship can be righted in terms of the creative aspect of things on SmackDown. There's no evidence to suggest that's going to happen. They're doing something really... Like you say, they're, they're doing something kind of interesting with Daniel Bryan right now, and I'm not sure. Week to week, it seems like it's headed in a different direction. I'm not sure it's going to play out the way they hope it is going to. Um, this is what it is, Steve. I'm calling it right now. I'm going to mention our SmackDown recap, which will air before this. Okay. This is what I'm saying. They're laying the groundwork for AJ Daniel Bryan in case Daniel Bryan gets cleared. All right. We'll, talk about, the, the we'll talk about that on the recap last Tuesday, or last Wednesday, rather. Um, but anyways, here's the thing about SmackDown is that it's talent. The depth isn't quite as, as deep as raw. And that's a massive problem on raw. Look at you. Look at who you have. Samoa Joe, Braun Strowman. Yeah, you got Roman Reigns. Samoa Joe, Braun Strowman, Seth Rollins. You got an up and coming Jason Jordan. Who's doing some really good character work right now. Um, look at the women's division. You got Oscar, you got Nia Jax, you got Alexa bliss doing really good work right now. It is so stacked, and creatively, it has all the momentum right now on its side. Raw is the show that Vince wants to promote, so he's going to be loading that up. It would not surprise me at all, although at this point, given that AJ Styles has established such an identity as the guy who built the house of SmackDown, already calls it. Um, it's the house that AJ Styles built. Thank you. It would be kind of surprising, I guess, if he moved to Raw at this point, but then on the other hand, they can write that off with one line. Um no, I think I think as long as they're invested in Roman Reigns being top guy, AJ yeah, Styles isn't going anywhere near Raw. Pr- you're probably right about that, but I mean, you know, SmackDown is getting very close to exhausting all the combinations that they possibly could have had. They need a but number one, they bungle every call up they have. Yeah, Bobby Roode, Shinsuke Nakamura. Um, number two, yes, they do. I mean, you look at this Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn thing, and it should have been. Way cooler than it actually was. You look at AJ Styles versus Kevin Owens, which should have been feud of the year last year, and it was bungled. Well, it was it was used as a vehicle to to further a Kevin Owens Shane McMahon feud. Exactly, and Shane McMahon is kind of a big part of the problem there. Yeah, he is. Hey, I I personally don't want to see the guy. I think he's a, he's a lousy promo. He can be brought to a decent match because he does the high. He can be used as a good plot device, but I don't want to see him in the ring. That's no, I don't fun. either. Um, and so, no, I think it's going to be Raw. Raw is reestablished or has reestablished itself as the premier show. I do, most of the time, have more fun watching SmackDown because it's shorter, because AJ's there, because Daniel Bryan seems to be having a good time, and because Kevin Owens is there, and, you know, their tag division's really deep. That being said, Raw still feels like the must-see show, thanks to Braun Strowman, thanks to, I mean, I'll say it, Roman Reigns, um, but thanks. I mean, God, look at that. I mean, Dean Ambrose is there. They have Samoa Joe. They have so much talent over there. Like an extra hour to fill. Yeah, I know. And it just it just feels like the show. Even though then you turn off SmackDown the next day. Well, this is so fun. It's gonna be. It's gonna continue to be Raw until the creative aspect of things. Until Daniel Bryan is cleared. Start turning around. And once he's cleared, then SmackDown is the show to watch. Um, well, once he gets, yeah, if he gets cleared, he said, what did he say? He said uh, something not clear like, by WrestleMania. He won't get cleared probably. Yeah. We'll talk about that more probably on dirt sheet or just on the recap today. I don't know. Yeah. We'll figure it out. We'll talk about it more in any event. It's in the past. Uh, yeah, yeah. This is airing after all those. <laughs> exactly. Next up, uh, we got our good friend, AO worm with a question. Let's see what he has to say. Hey, what's going on? Friend of your boy, AO worm here back with another video question of the year. So I want you guys to debate. Which Hardy is the supreme Hardy between Matt and Jeff? Like, who has the better career between their singles runs and their tag team runs in all the companies they've been in? Who is could go in as a Hall of Famer by themselves along with a tag team? Thanks, friendos. Thank you, A.O. Worm. He brings up another good point. Broken Matt's on, uh, on Raw. He's got his own little piece of land there doing amazing oh, things. Oh, like I mentioned Bray Wyatt in terms with, of the talents being wasted. With Bray Wyatt. Oh, yeah. That's a big talent being wasted. Um, anyways, do I go first here? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, who's the best? Well, it's Broken Matt. I mean, Jeff Hardy to me was always kind of an underwhelming 
like singles competitor. The Hardy Boys together back in the Attitude Era were, you know, by far the coolest thing ever. Um, Matt Hardy was always my least favorite Hardy until the Broken Matt stuff. Then it's well, like, yeah, oh, he reinvented himself. Love, yes. I love to see second acts. I love to see somebody turn around. You know, you're wallowing in the depths of despair in TNA, and then you're broken. And then you you're broken, and you're making waves. You're single handedly bringing this low dumpster diving company TNA Impact Wrestling from the shit, and you're bringing it in the ass into the light. Well, at least the stuff he's in. Yeah, he's great. Broken Matt is the best Hardy. He's the best version of of the Hardy. I hope we get some more of that pre film stuff with him and Bray Wyatt. I'm not. I want. I want a whole. At this point, I want a whole. Three hour episode of Raw just for them. How great with a like a feature length film. Great, but it never happened. A feature length film with Bray Wyatt and Matt Hardy. Oh man, that'd be the best thing it would I've ever be good. seen in my life. Anyways, yeah, it's, it's broken Matt. No, it's Jeff Hardy. Get out of here with this Matt Hardy business. Well, tell me why Itchweed is your favorite Hardy. Itchweed. Uh, the charismatic enigma. Jeff Hardy. A mouthful. Yeah, who's a more decorated wrestler? Jeff Hardy. Is he? Yeah. How so? Uh, well, Matt Hardy never won the world championship WB. Yeah. Jeff Hardy's won a couple times. Yeah, I know. But come on. Were, were any of those like really iconic reigns? I don't know if they're iconic, but at one point, Jeff Hardy, I think, was rivaling, if not surpassed, John Cena. I think in 2009 in merch sales. He was a, one, <laughs> one of, if, if not the top merch sale in WB. He was enormously popular. Okay. Um, and then he, you know, he had some personal issues. Yeah. Uh, which seems to have been uh, addressed. He seems to be. Healthy. On the straight and narrow. Yeah, which is good. It's always great to see um, that. Uh, but because of those issues, unfortunately, he had to go to TNA for a while. <laughs> but he... Uh, which, We're not anti-TNA. I just find it funny that like, I find it funny that some people... Some people well, I mean, for a while, it kind, of was, it kind of was a dumping ground. <laughs> it was. It was people who couldn't work at WWE anymore had to go to TNA. Yeah. Um, uh, he did some... Uh, despite some uh, 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 dark moments, mm -hmm. for example, his match gets sting. He did do some interesting stuff. Itchweed. <laughs> that willow thing. <laughs> that was that interesting. I think. I don't know much about it. But uh, but even before Broken Matt, yeah. Jeff Hardy was trying to reinvent himself. Yeah. Um, which not a lot of people do. Um, but going back to WWE, in terms of WWE, there was no doubt who at least Vince saw as the star. It was Jeff. Oh, when they true. came back, uh, we were hearing rumblings that Vince wanted Jeff to be... To, to to challenge for the universal title, one to put him back in the main event. He's still enormously popular with fans, um, as we saw with Matt Hardy. Unless he's doing the broken things, it people don't really care. Yeah, I know. Which is a bummer because I like Matt Hardy. Yeah, I like Matt Hardy. He too. seems to be a really creative guy. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, um, but even I don't really want to see him if he's not broken. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, whereas Jeff Hardy, Jeff Hardy is a better wrestler. Yeah, that's true. The weird thing about Jeff Hardy too is that he hasn't aged. No, he still does stuff that he shouldn't. You know, that he did when he was twenty. He probably well, not shouldn't. just that. He literally looks the exact he same. He looks a lot the like same. He just yes. does, it, it's weird. He just hasn't really aged. Not really. He's, especially a guy who's lived as hard a life. I know. You know, physically as he has. Yeah. Um, it's kind of crazy. But I'll I'll I'll, I'll end with this. Um, I don't know if Jeff Hardy could be a headliner in the Hall of Fame, but I know Matt Hardy wouldn't be. Yeah, okay, all right. But I think Jeff Hardy is a possibility he could be. Let me ask you something. Do you think the Hardy Boys could be the first headlining tag team in the Hall of Fame? Because I kind of feel like yes. Potentially. I feel like yes. Potentially. Matt Hardy, you're right about that. I don't. There's too many, there's too many people out there. There's too many headliner potential headliners out there for the next, like, but between now and we get to the point where we start having, like, just an obscene number of people who are retiring and like heading to the Hall of Fame, yeah, that could be potential headliners. I just yeah. don't see Jeff Hardy being a headliner. But I would see Jeff Hardy being a headliner long before I'd see Matt Hardy. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, the answer is yes. Yeah, I don't know. The answer is yes. I don't know if I can see either. Moving on. Uh, oh, our good friend O Karen. Let's see what Karen has to say. Hey guys, it's Karen. With the Women's Royal Rumble coming up, the big question is, should the belts get defended that night? Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Karen. Uh, no. Oh, I go first. Yeah, you go first. Um, so on our Raw recap, I believe I counted 22 women between Raw and SmackDown in, uh, in the, the respective women's divisions mm -hmm. combined. 
Yes. Um, or was it 20? I think it was 22. It was, it was 18. There was eight. If, if they had uh, title matches. Yeah, it was 18. It was 18, 18 on the main the roster. Yeah. Um, sorry, I was just doing some quick math. Um, yes, I think they should be defended. Um, I'm of the opinion that on all the major pay-per-views, all the titles should be defended. I understand what the rumble is happening. Um, that makes it harder. It's, it's not always the case. Um, and it seems like on Raw they're doing this thing where Alexa Bliss is getting in between Nia Jax and Enzo, and that's going to lead to uh, uh, Alexa Bliss taking on Nia, which is a match that we've been waiting to see for a while. They've been teasing it forever. But at the same time, I understand why Nia would potentially think, okay, it's cool I'm getting this title shot. At the same time, maybe I really want to be in this Rumble. This is a historic moment. Um, so I understand the the potential complexity in having both women's titles defended um, the same night as this huge, momentous occasion. That said, I'll go back to it. I believe on the, the major pay-per-views, every belt should be defended um, across the board. Uh, I, just, I just think on uh, pay-per-views that matter this much, every title should be on the line because, I mean, ultimately, kayfabe, that's what everybody's fighting for are these titles. Yeah. So, like, why pass up a surefire shot at the title to be in a Rumble when you have a 1 in 30 chance of winning it? Mm -hmm. If you have a surefire mm -hmm. shot at, 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 at getting this title, you do it. Yeah. Even if that means you stay out of the Rumble. All right, here's the thing. I think no. I actually agree with you. I think they should be defended at the Rumble. Yeah. But I'll, I'll do this. Imagine this scenario. All right. Women's Rumble is about to go down. Yeah. They have one thrown over here, and it's blue. One thrown over here, and it's like red. And you got Alexa Bliss sitting here with her championship. And Charlotte, Charlotte the other with one, her yeah. championship. They should do this with the men, too. Although they, they, they always defend their crap. But if you're not going to have them defend it, there's like not enough time or whatever. They're sitting in their thrones. And then whoever comes out of the rumble then gets to choose whoever they do. And so Asuka comes over, and she does this. She looks at Charlotte. And she says, she I want both at, of them. She looks at Asuka. Don't steal my damn punchline. And she goes, I want them all. I said, neither of you are ready for Oscar. Neither of you are ready for Oscar. That's what she does. So now what's she, what's, she, what's she screaming at Regal? I want all of them. All of them. She, yeah. He says, which one? All of them. Yeah. Yeah. That's what, that's what they do. Um, no. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm with you on this one. They but should. I understand why, why, you know, it, say, you know, someone was faced or sorry, booked to either face Alexa Bliss or Charlotte for the title that night. You know, they'd be, I understand if they have mixed feelings about it, thinking, oh, he's cool. I'm getting a title shot. It's a guaranteed title shot, mm -hmm. which is cool. But at the same time, it's like, this is well, first they, rumble. It'd be no, cool but, to be a part of that, too. Yeah, no, but here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, though. Being the champion, you are part of the rumble in a sense, in a sense that whoever's winning this thing is then either no, I know. I'm, I'm, not or, I'm not talking about yeah. the, cha the champs, per se. I'm saying talking about people who are challenging the champions um, at the rumble. Yeah. I mean, oh, oh I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Wise, yeah, they should yeah, think, yeah. oh, I'm getting a guaranteed title shot. I'm not going to pass this up. Yeah, Especially no, I see at one what of the saying. major pay-per-views. But at the same time, you know, the, yeah, you're getting a title shot. But mm -hmm. also, you're missing out on this historic match. I see your match. point. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I can see how people. But yeah, me. kayfabe wise, it's like, oh, whoever wins this is going to be taken on me at WrestleMania because I'm about to go in there and win this title. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I got your point. Yeah. Or even just, okay, I have a guaranteed title mm -hmm. match at the Rumble. But if I'm in the Rumble, it's just a 1 in 30 shot of me winning it. I'll take the guaranteed title yeah. match now. Because here's, here's what I like about defending. I don't know. I, I totally did not bring the argument that I should have brought. But uh, here's the thing that I also like about the titles being defended at the Rumble. Number one, it if you know if you want to say, oh, you need to be on par with the guys or whatever, then the guys have their titles defended at the Rumble. You know, then so should you. Um, and then number two... Uh, I forgot what I was going to say about number two. But, yeah, no, you should totally defend the title. Oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. It'd be cool. It Definitely. is. It is. It's part, like, the, the titles are part. Of the story of the Rumble, of yes. Of the story of the Rumble. And I understand that, okay, this is the first one. Should they focus all the attention on the Rumble? Well, part of the Rumble is the titles. I mean, that's the goal. Well. That's the the prize you, you're you're vying for if yeah. you win the Rumble is the I'm title. I'm looking forward to this, man. There's oh, me too. so many, so many open spots. Yeah, there's that we don't potentially know. 12 open spots. Yeah. Man, that is fantastic. That's amazing. Uh, next up, our good friendo, Adam Mayhem. Let's see what he has to say. Buenas tardes, friendo universo. Bienvenidos to the very first edition of Chit Chat with the Champ in 2018. Now, Steven Larson, quick question. We've been hearing all about this 10,000-seater 
that Cody Rhodes and the Young Bucks are doing or planning on doing and the people that might come in and Ring of Honor and all that. So my question is this, if they do bring in a CM Punk or a Daniel Bryan, would they really be filling out a 10,000 seater by themselves? Like they're trying to prove to Dave Meltzer that they're, they can do? Or would it be with outside help, Dan O'Brien slash CM Punk or whoever it is? All right, debate that. Have a good one, guys. Thank you, Adam Mayhem. Thank you, Adam Mayhem. Oh, man. Uh, who goes first? You. I go first. Um, so the question is basically, is it really considered doing this by themselves if they bring in a Daniel Bryan or a CM Punk? Uh, my answer is yes, absolutely. I mean, Dave Meltzer's original, like the, the genesis of this apparently was Dave Meltzer saying that Ring of Honor would never be able to sell out a 10,000 uh, venue arena, a 10,000 seat arena venue, whatever. Yeah. And uh, Cody Rhodes said, me and the Bucks can. No, he said, I'll take that bet. I'll take that bet. There you go. Well, number one, CM Punk and Daniel Bryan both are veterans of Ring of Honor, so it's not outside of their own possibility to still consider it part of like, the Ring of the, Honor family. The spirit of that bet, you know. Um, so absolutely, it's still you know they're the ones they're the ones scouting the damn locations. They're the ones. I mean, they're promote. They're the ones. They're the promoters behind this thing. So absolutely, one hundred percent, this would totally be their deal. They can claim we did this by ourselves. Every promoter, every wrestling promotion has to go out and say, what's the best talent I can bring in on in in the budget that I have? You know, what is possible for me to bring in to put asses in seats? And so that's going to be their mindset. If they have, you know, Daniel Bryan, CM Punk, both good friends of these guys, if they can get them to come out in some capacity and therefore or thereby get 10,000 people out, then absolutely that's doing it by themselves for sure. Yeah. Yeah, there's no doubt in my mind for that. Yeah, that's the right answer. Okay. But I'll say I'll say for the sake of argument, no. <laughs> okay. If they if they if they say, okay, well, we'll do this in conjunction with Ring of Honor, but we're gonna do this ourselves, again, yours with the right answer. Mm -hmm. Um then they should only be able to use <laughs> people <laughs> under current Ring of Honor contract right. or some people who moonlight with New Japan. So they can bring in Kenny Omega. Mm -hmm. They can bring in Kazuchika Okada. Mm -hmm. They can bring in Tetsuya Naito. Um, but beyond that, no free agents. Oh, <laughs> no free agents. No free agents. So no CM Punk, no Daniel Bryan. That's cheating. That's not doing it themselves. <laughs> they should sell, be able to sell out that place based on their own star power. Yeah. Again, you gave the right answer. <laughs> For the sake of argument, <laughs> I have to differ. Only people who have uh, merchandise on pro topic. wrestling tees, in, no, in oh. hot topic. Yes, that's available. That isn't WWE, obviously. Yes. So Joy Ryan, Candice LeRae, now. Yes. Apparently they, they are have, eligible. They're eligible. Yeah. Although they didn't have any other stuff at the local hot topic. I looked. What a bummer. I know. I might have picked up a world's cutest tag team shirt. Yeah, man. If I'd buy they that. had it, I'd buy that. Uh, but no, you gave the right answer. It's it's they're the ones promoting it. They're the ones putting the card together. They're the one putting up the money for it. Mm -hmm. So if they can get this all together. And they can sell out a ten thousand seat people or arena, regardless of who's on the card. Then yes, they did it themselves. And Dave Meltzer, I'm sure, would be happy to say, "Well done, boys. You proved me wrong. You yes. proved the Wrestling Observer himself. Who really, should, given that he's the Wrestling Observer himself, he should be able to look into the wrestling future, past and present, and say, oh, they were able to do that and never put up the bet in the first place.' Maybe he said, "Well, he's not a uh, uh, omniscient. Is that the word for that?" Well, as the wrestling observer himself, he should be though. Well, he's not. He's he's not a only in the world he's of not wrestling. A wrestling deity. Well, if you call yourself the wrestling observer himself, it means he pays attention to it. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, That's I, what but, observer means. It means well, he I think of, I think the watcher in, in the Marvel universe sees everything. Well, it's not Dave Meltzer, man. He doesn't see everything. That's what I think when I think the wrestling observer. Well, I think your your perspective is skewed. No way, man. Your perspective isn't skewed enough. Next up, our good... Oh, this. Oh, this guy's the worst. The undead commissioner himself. What is this guy doing sending us a video? Oh, I can't stand him. No, I love wow. him so much. He's our commissioner. He's crap. Uh, Ulysses. He's got a question. Let's see what he has to say. Hey there, Steven Larson. Happy New Year. Hope all is well. My question this week for Matt Chat is... I know... A while back, you guys were talking about a rumor that John Cena's WrestleMania match is going to be a really, really big match. Uh, probably not a title match, but still a big 
money match. Uh, my question for you guys is what is the possibility that his match is in fact against Braun Strowman? I don't know if that's necessarily a money match or anything like that. But I'd be interested to hear your guys' thoughts on that possibility. Peace. Thank you, Ulysses. What a terrible question. This is actually a pretty good question, Steve. All right, go ahead and hit it. Um, Cena versus Braun at Mania. No. So first of all, the odds of it happening I probably are probably slim, slim to none. I mean, we've heard that yeah that uh, WB has something major lined up for Cena at Mania, something grander apparently than fighting for the WWE title against AJ Styles. Just means a part timer. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Um, and while I, th- this match would be good for Braun, especially if he were to pick up the win, at the same time, it's like Cena's so disinterested in wrestling right now. It seems. Yeah, I know. Like he'll come out and do as captivating as they may be. A fairly cookie cutter promo, mm-hmm. a series of them more or less saying the same things in different ways towards Braun. Yeah. Braun would live a bunch of power slams, and uh, probably Braun would pick up the win at Mania. It'd be great for him. Yeah, but I'd rather see Braun. I mean, ideally, man, give me Braun Brock for the main event at Mania, man. Yeah, give me that. Um, I'd rather see Braun Triple H. Really? Yeah. Wow, that's interesting. It was probably going to be Braun Kane. I'd rather see Braun Cena rather than Braun Kane. You think Kane. they're going to do Braun Kane at Mania? Yeah. Oh, I don't think that's going to oh, happen. Oh, wait. No, there's another pay-per-view. It's probably not. Yeah. And they got to put something together real quick for Braun. Yeah, they'll do something big for Braun. Um, um, but as far as from Cena's perspective, I mean, I don't even know why he's still wrestling, honestly. Yeah. So I don't know what's in it for him. I love that. I love that you because I agree with what you're saying about John Cena. Why is he even still wrestling? He seems to. I don't even want to say he phones it in. It's just, it's, dude, when you've done everything he's done, why, there's no reason for him to be around. And it's just annoying these days when they have, like, he'll tweet that he's entering the Royal Rumble. Oh, I know. They'll tweet that he's being added to the Survivor, Survivor Series, Series match. And then when he shows up, there's there's zero, from from the perspective of somebody who's really into, the, who's, who was really into the build for Survivor Series, he was just this add-on, yeah. you know, that didn't matter, didn't even wear the blue shirt. It was like that spot could have gone to somebody else, like a plucky underdog of yeah, some no. sort. Here's here's what I, uh, what I would actually like to see for Cena at Mania. Cena versus Samoa Joe. They have history. They were in WWE developmental back in the early aughts. Yeah. Um, I Joe is one of, if not the best promo men in the business. He can bring out, I would hope, something, uh, some new uh, passion, intensity from John Cena. Um, be a fun match, really good match. A lot of story to mine for it. That's what I'd prefer for Cena. I'm going to say, yeah, so we're, we're obviously we're arguing right now is do we want to see it? I, I absolutely say yes. I absolutely say yes. John Cena versus Brian, I think it would be great. Money match, I'm not sure about that, but would it be great? Absolutely. Look at what John Cena did at Mania last year. Granted, the build was pretty fun. It really got the Miz over, which was weird. Um, well, the Miz got the Miz over. Yeah, I know. I know. Well, I'm, I'm talking about the build, the, the, the program itself. Um I definitely want to see it. Look at the the highlights for John Cena were him putting over Roman Reigns, him putting over Shinsuke Nakamura, and him putting over one other person. Who was it? I thought there was one other. I thought there were three people that he kind of did a passing of the torch type thing. Oh, Bray. Oh, and Bray Wyatt. Yeah, which yeah, he was dropped cool. The title and that was that was a waste. So that's kind. Of, I mean, that's in my opinion, that's when John Cena is at his best these days. And he wouldn't come in and do the thing where he basically runs down, you know, like when he, he was all, he almost had the Miz crying. He told Roman Reigns that you're not doing your job. Then that's why I'm still here. Yeah, he can't do any of that stuff to Braun. He has no, there is no claim for that with Braun. And so we'd see the Cena that I kind of like to see when Cena comes in and he says, man, I've done everything in my career, but I've never faced a guy as big as you, you know, which is kind of like an accurate claim. Like you can kind of say that with Braun. Braun is something we haven't, we've seen variations on the Braun monster type thing before, but Braun is something very different. Mm -hmm. And I think him coming in with Braun, number one, to put Braun over, that would be an absolute must. That would be great for Braun. Because Cena, I think more than Triple H, Cena is kind of beating him is kind of a title unto itself at this point. I think Triple H thinks he is. Cena actually Well, the problem is. with Triple H thinking he is is that Triple H has done that so much now that it's kind of... It's kind of not Beating that. him doesn't carry the same way that it used to. Right, exactly. And so with Braun... Although Cena, if he keeps... And I understand he's in a position in his career where he should be putting young talent over mm-hmm. or younger talent over. 
But if he keeps losing all these matches, passing out, out all these torches, it's going to get to the point where he might approach that well, territory. Well, dude, it's not like he's passing a torch to Ty Dillinger. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, well, Triple H didn't do that either. He did a great job. <laughs> That's true. But this is John Cena. I mean, there was like a graphic the other day that said Triple H has had the most WrestleMania losses, losses yeah. of like whatever. Ever. Ever. Um, and so, I mean, that kind of says something. Like Triple H is... Did they count his loss to Warrior in like a minute as three? <laughs> he probably should have. But I think John Cena is a, is an awesome high profile win for Braun Strowman. And honestly, I look would I love to see Braun versus Brock, where Braun, Braun wins the Universal Title. Yes, I would love to see that. But at the same time, I don't want them to put off the Roman Reigns thing any longer than they have. Did to. you see that that still some bouncing around Twitter of I forgot where it's from a promo for Elimination Chamber that has Braun with the Universal Title on his shoulder. Yeah, that's got to be. Bunk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that can't, there's not because Brock's in there too, and Brock right now is not advertised to be at Elimination Chamber. Yeah, I mean they're just throwing crap out of that. You know what that still reminding me of when you go to like the 99 cent store and you see like Army Man and there's like a picture of Tom Hanks from Saving Private Ryan. Yeah, like they just throw some crap together. <laughs> I, that's I literally saw that like years ago, like Army Man, and it's like this is not legal. You can't do that. You can't do that. Uh, <laughs> but anyways. No, I think I, I think John Cena is a title unto himself, and if you beat John Cena, you're kind of earning a very big, very prestigious title in the business, and I think that would be a great next step for Braun Strowman. I would love to see it. I don't think it's going to happen. I think they have part-timer in mind for John Cena, yeah. but I mean, I would actually really love to see the build. I'd love to see the promo that John Cena would come up with for, for Braun you Strowman. You know, last week I asked, or we wondered about uh, Cena versus Batista. Mm-hmm. Apparently, they do have some backstory. Oh yeah! Apparently they had a really good feud. Yeah, yeah. So I could see. This. I wasn't watching at the time. I don't know everything. So I could see that if it's Cena Batista, I could see that as a oh, logical God, extension. Oh God, I would of it. not want to see that. It would make sense though. If Batista came in, if I'll, I'll say, I'll say this: I would actually be wildly entertained by that. If Batista came in as a, and I don't know if he could do this now because people kind of know who he is and 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 what his regular persona is. If he came in as a super prickish Hollywood heel, kind of mm-hmm. like what he did before, yeah, you know, yeah, that would, but oh, you know, I, yeah, but I, now, I, I think, now it's now should. it's I've made it, yeah. <laughs> and now look at me, well, I'm especially a huge star. Like, and look at you, Cena. You I haven't know. done anything, and you want it so bad, exactly, <laughs> because he could be like the Cena to John. Yeah, no, I thought the same thing. <laughs> if they, I don't know if they would do that though. Do you think they would do that? I don't know. I mean, be people essentially, it would just be them comparing their IMDb profiles. I know. I and think that, that could be, be funny. Fantastic. That could be really good. That'd be funny. I don't know if anybody would like if there would be like a huge emotional investment in that though. It'd just be hilarious. It'd be promos. entertaining. I know. It'd be super entertaining. Oh man, I don't. I don't know who people would be behind. I mean, Batista. I think would probably at this point. I don't know. I think there's a big difference between now how people view Batista. Oh, definitely. definitely and his definitely. La- even his last run was like four years ago. Yeah, was. definitely. Uh, next up, official Fahad. He's got some breaking breaking news. news. Let's take a look. As you guys probably already heard in the news, WWE have gone to business. So now there's a now that there's a new intake of uh, wrestlers into the wrestling world, which promotion should all the wrestlers go to? And remember, all the WWE superstars have to be in the same promotion. Thanks. Thank you, official Fahad, for the breaking <laughs> oh, news. Oh no! WWE's out of business. Guess what, Steve? That means we're out of business too. We're out of jobs. Time to get our applications. Um, I mean, our resumes. Uh, no applications to Starbucks. You got it right. There you go. Okay. Um, so, oh, uh, uh, he, he you suggests, go first. Yeah. So he suggests only one promotion gets all the talent. No, I don't, I don't want to do That's not possible. That. So eh, we're not going to do that. However, so how about this? Let's take 10 uh, members of the roster. Okay. So stick, stick to main roster. Okay. Because it's easier. And, t- and, and say where they go. Okay. We're going to do this collaboratively? Should we, no. Indivi- could we do, we should do, the, do you want to do the same 10 people and then individually we'll say where they should go? Or let's just do this as one big collaboration. No, Starts. I want individuals. You're okay. So you do yours first. Okay. Ten individuals. Give me, let's see here. AJ Styles, Daniel Bryan, Nakamura, Asuka, uh, Charlotte, Braun, uh, Cena. So, you know, just retire if WWE went out of business. I mean, Bray. No, I, I don't know where Bray Wyatt would ever go. I mean, no, I don't get him either. Oh, Kevin Owens. Sami Zayn. Let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I need one more. I will take. Uh, 
who do I like? Who's over there on? Oh, I know. I'll go to NXT. Alistair. No, I said no. No, no, no NXT. NXT. Okay, no. no NXT. Oh, give me a tag team. Oh, here we go. Give me the New Day. Oh, good idea. All right. Um, AJ Styles goes back. AJ Styles. AJ Styles, Daniel Bryan, Nakamura, Asuka. I'll go to New Japan. Charlotte goes to Impact. <laughs> Braun. Where would Braun go? I don't know. You have to work that out. Braun becomes a young lion in New Japan. Uh, Cena goes to... Cena does a two-year residency with PWG. Oh, great I idea. saw somebody on Twitter, and because sometimes I like looking, watching Dave Meltzer's little arguments with people on Twitter. It's am amusing to me. Somebody said that the PWG crowd would scoff if John Cena showed up in PWG. Those, if you think those tickets sell out fast now, oh, they'd, be, they'd sell out immediately. They would embrace the living crap out of John Cena. That would be so much fun. To, to be there mm -hmm. would be so much fun. Mm -hmm. A John Cena match in PWG. I'm going to say John Cena goes to PWG. Kevin Owens goes to PWG. No, Kevin Owens will go back to Ring of Honor. Screw it. Same as he can go back to Ring of Honor. And The New Day also go to PWG. This is what I got. There we go. Uh, AJ Styles, New Japan Pro Wrestling. Seth Rollins, Ring of Honor. Okay. Uh, Asuka and Sasha Banks would both go to Women of Honor. Okay. And really kickstart okay, right uh, that promotion, that division for Ring of Honor. Uh, Kevin Owens and Samoa Joe would go to Ring of Honor. Okay. Uh, Daniel Bryan, New Japan. Okay. The Usos would go to New Japan oh, Pro that's Wrestling. Cool. What faction, though? Well, Bullet Gun. Or Bullet Club, sorry. <laughs> Bullet Gun. I think it's got <laughs> Suzuki Goon and Bullet Club. Bullet Goon. They start their own faction. Yes. Half Bullet Club and half Suzuki. Uh, Braun got New Japan. Okay. And That's a young lion, though, right? No, 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 no. No, it's not young no, lion? He's, like, he's not getting beat up by Suzuki. What are you talking about? <laughs> and the Roman Reigns would go to Impact. <laughs> How about this, man? <laughs> okay, that's good. Um, what well, Braun comes in as a young lion. And Suzuki tries to beat him up. He tries to. And, and Strowman destroys him. <laughs> And he instantly graduates from Young Line. Exactly. There you go. All right, go. I, can, I can get on board with that. In the span of one episode or one pay-per-view. Yes. I like it. Good question. Thank you, Official Fahad. Yes. Last question from Wayne Maker. This so, is the text question. Wayne Maker had some family business to take care of, but he really wanted to get this question in. It's a very convoluted one, but I love Wayne Maker, so I'm going to go ahead and say it now. Okay, so uh, he says well, some... Hold, hold on, hold on. Let's, let's actually pull up the actual question instead of that summation you have there because it's not the full thing. All right. Um, he, he says that in his estimation that some of the worst matches can come from two wrestlers who wrestle a similar style. Um, he also says some of the best <laughs> matches happen yeah. as well. Um, and then some mediocre matches yeah. as well. But what he wants us to do is to toss a coin um, and pick... Two styles okay. of four he listed. Okay. Pick two wrestlers who wrestled that particular style. Okay. And have us book the best match. These okay. styles were Haas, High Flyer, uh, Technical, mm -hmm. and Brawler slash Striker. Okay. Um, Steve, you got to choose first. Yeah. So you might as well go first. All right. Uh, so I would take my, my matchup would be a Haas style of wrestling. And I'm going to choose Keith Lee. And granted, Keith Lee is a hoss who does great hoss things, but he can also do a lot of crazy cool stuff too. Um, and he's going to take on the high flyer Will Ospreay, one of my yes. favorite wrestlers yeah, in the good. world. Um, I love good, good everything he does. I would love to see this match. I think it would be a lot of fun. I, the idea of Will Ospreay trying to hit, what does he call his cutter? Oss cutter. The Oss cutter. That's simple enough. The Oss cutter on, on Keith Lee who would then just – throw him away and he'd go flying away. Yeah. I think it would be a lot of fun. Keith Lee goes over. Okay. So I was I was left with two styles, technical and striker. Okay. I mean this matchup's easy. Daniel Bryan. Oh yeah. One of the four most technical wrestlers in the entire world. Absolutely. Against Shinsuke Nakamura. Ooh. Probably the greatest striker. Ooh. Um this of course would happen to New Japan Pro Wrestling. Yes, correct. Um it would be a match on par no, better, better than Nakamura's than. match against AJ Styles. Whoa, that's like my favorite match. We're talking at least five and three-quarter stars. Oh, at least. Um, 
If it's Daniel Bryan's return match, he has to go over. He's got to go over, right? He's got to go over, yes. He's got to go over. And it'll be... Because Daniel Bryan... Here's the thing about this. There's very few wrestlers who exclusively wrestle one style. True. I mean, like Braun Strowman, he's your prototypical monster uh, giant wrestler, and he more or less wrestles that way, although Mm -hmm. he'll bust out a crazy dropkick every now and again, which isn't a typical monster giant wrestler thing to do, even though the giant did top rope drop kicks Mm -hmm. when he first started. Anyways... You see him in uh, Alexa Bliss or uh, yeah, that's cool. Team? That's cool. That's fun. I mean, there's like Zack Saber Jr. is the very definition definition of a technical wrestler, uh, but there's so few wrestlers who just stick to one style these days. Right, like yeah, I yeah, thought, yeah. okay, technical wrestler Pete Dunne yeah. does a lot of joint manipulation from that British style wrestling, but that's not all he does. Yeah, he's yeah. also a really proficient striker. Yeah, true. So it, to to just kind of you know say, okay, this guy is a striker. That guy is like. He mentions uh, Alistair Black as mm-hmm. one of his, his examples. As we saw with his match against uh, Velveteen Dream, he can too. wrestle yeah. a technical match too. Yeah. So that's I think what's great about wrestling nowadays is that there's just people that aren't limiting themselves to one style. Yeah, people are proficient yeah. in a huge variety of styles, and I think it makes the in-ring product that much better. I think that's that's one of the foremost reasons why the indie scene is blowing up mm-hmm. these days because you, what exactly you said. There are guys who are uh, that that look a certain way that are absolutely defying you know, the norms and, you know, they're bucking all the trends and it, yeah. it's fantastic. We have one oh. last video question from Patrick Spark. Breaking. This is just in now. Let's see what Patrick has to say. Hey, friendos, Pat here. Gotta make this quick and that work. Really cold outside too. So, one of the big matches at WrestleMania 19 was obviously Vince versus Hogan. It was a blood fest. It was very fun. But the main storyline for that match was Vince was claiming... There would be no Hulk Hogan without Vince McMahon. Hulk Hogan was made by Vince McMahon. But Hulk Hogan retorted that with saying the WWF would not have been as big as it was if there was no Hulk Hogan. WrestleMania wouldn't be as big as it was if it were not for him. Vince claimed there would be no Hulkmania. But I want you to debate this. Steve, you got Vince's points. Larson, Hogan, have fun. Bye, guys. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Patrick. What a difficult... This is a conundrum right here, brother. It really is. Well, uh, like Patrick said, I'm going to go ahead and, and argue Vince's case. Yeah. Vince, to his credit, for a time, was an absolute mastermind in the wrestling business. He still kind of is. Some say he might be out of touch. Some say he's really old, and that's factual. Um, but... If it wasn't for Vince buying up, eating up all those territories, understanding that wrestling could be a national mainstream phenomenon, mm-hmm. right? Um, then I, there, there would not have been there would not have been uh, wrestling as we know. It. We would not be doing this job, in my yes. opinion. And so I think here's the thing: we we can't really know. We can't really know what. Uh, what was more important, Hogan or Vince? Um, Hogan was gone from the WWF for a very long time between 1994, 93, and uh, 2002. And look what happened. WWF ended up getting having their biggest boom period, having their biggest draw, and his name was not Hulk Hogan. It was Steve Austin. Yep. Here's an 8-bit version of him right here. Yeah. So that would lead me to believe that Vince McMahon was absolutely and totally in the right when he suggested there would be no Hulk Hogan without Vince McMahon. I agree with Vince McMahon. You do. So wait, what was Hogan's idea that there would be no WrestleMania without Hulk Hogan? There were, yeah, yeah. Vince rode the back of Hulk Hogan and Hulkamania to bring the WWF to prominence to where it was. Well, I'll, I'll give this to Hogan. Um, even before he was apparently handpicked by Vince to be top guy in WWF. Best guy. Um, he was already a, a, a rising star in AWA. Matt, he was a star there. Yeah, yeah sure. uh, new, in uh, Japan. Mm-hmm, yeah. Um, he uh, was featured prominently in Rocky Three, released in 1982. Do you remember his name? Thunder Lips. Very good. Um, so even without WWF, Hulk Hogan would have been a, a star wrestler. The ingredients were all there. Um, it, it was it was a perfect marriage of Vince's uh, wrestling mind with uh, Hogan's apparent charisma, which uh, looking back now is is it seems to kind of escape me at points. Yeah, I don't get it either. It's 
weird. So he's, it's a product of the 80s, man. Yeah, dude, I guess so. I kind of don't really get it either. Yeah. Anyways, um, I, this is a situation where no party is totally right. They're both right. Without Hogan, uh, one could argue that Vince wouldn't have had the star to build his company around. Um, but without Vince, Hogan just would have been stuck in the te- uh, some territory, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. being a territorial star, but maybe probably never reaching the the star status of someone like Ric Flair. Mm-hmm. Because who knows if you know, like in the later days, AWA was on ESPN, but before that, I don't think it had any national TV exposure. Mm-hmm. Without national TV exposure, Hogan never would have been the massive star he ended up being, and that came with signing with WWF. Both of them are right. Yeah, that's actually the real answer. Yeah, I I kind of agree with that. I was Hogan integral. I mean, that's something we never know. Um, if you look at who else he could have built that company around, I mean, like say, was, say is Macho Man too weird to yeah. have built it? Probably. Yeah, you know, because um, it wasn't it wasn't just you know like I think with Hogan it was it was it was his apparent charisma. Um, <laughs> But then, like, you know, he was presented as a wholesome, yeah. all-American so weird. Uh, guy. The whole take your vitamins yeah. and, 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 you Imagine know. Imagine Macho Man saying that. Remember a kiss. Remember a kiss. No one would take their vitamins if he said it. <laughs> Say your prayers. No, oh, no yeah. one would take their vitamins. Pray to the Macho Man. I'm so God. I'm trying to think of someone else that was around. Right, I know, I know. In the early 80s that could have filled that same role. Could Vince McMahon... <laughs> That Vince McMahon had gone to the NWA and said, "Rick Flair, come up now, come up in like 1985 or whatever, yeah, and be the wholesome good guy." No, Rick Flair was way too edgy, man. <laughs> Woo! He was take your back, but he would have been pre- thrusting his pelvis while doing it. <laughs> uh, hey, you know, you know who he could have plucked? Who? No, that was too early. Lex Luger. <laughs> I was gonna say Sting. That was like five, ten years too early. Oh yeah, that was a uh, well. I mean, like, yeah, Sting was, was like eighty nine. Well, that's when he grew, grew to prominence at WCW. But he was wrestling before then. Who else could have been Hulk Hogan? This is a great question. Who else could have been Hulk Hogan? Could Piper have been an effective good guy? No, he's no, much better. Heel. Right? He couldn't build around. I mean, he tried to build around Snuka, didn't he? In the, before Hogan, yeah, and didn't really. I mean, it drew, but it wasn't like national. Well, yeah, it drew regionally. Yeah. Unless he killed the person. Andre, maybe? Yeah, I was thinking Andre, too, but then there's also, hey, kiss, say your prayers. You know, like, nobody understands what he's saying. Um, Mr. Wonderful. Yeah. Orndorff. Yeah. Who's going to follow a dude named Orndorff? But he's Mr. Wonderful. And I don't remember any promos of his. There was nothing There was nothing extra charismatic about Mr. Wonderful. Oh, he was, he was charismatic in the ring. I don't remember promos, though. Yeah, see? He wasn't like a larger than life. As wonderful as he might have been, he wasn't like a larger than life. Yeah, that's true. character. That's true. Could he have plucked Sid from somewhere? Who else in the NWA? They tried it with Sid, and that didn't work. Who else in the NWA? Sid, get out of here with that. Who else in the NWA was Barry hot? Wyndham. Barry, there you go. A lot of people thought Barry Wyndham was going to be a big star. Um, Bret Hart. Just oh, start with Bret Hart immediately. Start with, yeah, there you go. He's so young. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, Hogan. Hogan was sort of that... X Factor guy. Yeah. If Vince wasn't so hardcore about like having, you know, big muscle men dudes. I mean, the muscle men thing was a, an 80s thing in oh, general yeah, yeah, anyways. Yeah, yeah. But I wonder what kind of identity pro wrestling would have taken had Vince brought up Dusty or brought over Dusty and said, hey, I'm merging the entire company around you. That would have been weird, though. Yeah. That would have been awesome, though. Could have been great. I mean, Dusty was a huge draw for a number of years. So, mm-hmm. yeah. How about Who Ole knows? Anderson? Ole Anderson in the in the Hulk Hogan role, <laughs> the grumpiest. Uh, he tells you to take your vitamins, say your prayers. You just look like you're you're being lectured to, <laughs> or you're grounded. Anyways, that's it for Matt Chatter. Yeah, buddy. that's it. Thanks for hanging out. Really appreciate. It. Until next time, talk to you guys later. Bye.